In this video, we will explain recording purchases using a perpetual inventory system. Companies purchase inventory using cash or credit. They normally record purchases when they receive the goods from the seller. Every purchase should be supported by a business document that provides written evidence of the transaction, such as a purchase invoice. Companies record cash purchases by an increase in inventory and a decrease in cash. Credit purchases are recorded by an increase in inventory and an increase in accounts payable. For example, Sock Stereo purchases inventory for $3,800 on account from PW Audio Supply. A purchase invoice must accompany a credit sale. Sock Stereo makes the following journal entry to record its purchase. The entry debits inventory and credits accounts payable for $3,800. The sales agreement indicates who, the seller or the buyer, is responsible for paying for the freight. A third party, such as FedEx or UPS, delivers the goods from the seller to the buyer's place of business. Freight terms are expressed as either FOB shipping point or FOB destination. The letters FOB mean free on board. If the terms are FOB shipping point, the buyer pays the freight cost. If, however, the terms are FOB destination, the seller pays the freight cost. If the buyer pays the freight cost, these costs are considered part of the cost of purchasing inventory. For example, if Sock Stereo, the buyer, pays public carrier company $150 for freight charges, they would debit or increase inventory and credit or decrease cash. If the seller pays the freight cost on outgoing merchandise, these costs are an operating expense. For example, if PW Audio Supply, the seller, pays the freight charges, the entry would be a debit or an increase to an expense account titled freight out, sometimes we refer to this as delivery expense, and a credit or a decrease to cash for $150. A purchaser may be dissatisfied with the merchandise received because the goods are damaged or defective, possibly of inferior quality, or simply do not meet the purchaser's specifications. In such cases, the purchaser may return the goods to the seller for credit if the sale was made on credit, or for a cash refund if the purchase was for cash. This transaction is known as a purchase return. Most of us can relate to a purchase return. We purchase something, we get home, and decide we no longer want it, so we return it. Alternatively, the purchaser may choose to keep the merchandise if the seller is willing to grant an allowance or a deduction from the purchase price. This transaction is known as a purchase allowance. Many years ago, I purchased LG appliances and typically my rule of thumb is no deliveries on Monday. But I was so excited to get my new appliances I made an exception. And they were delivered first thing Monday morning. Well they literally dragged these items into my home and of course the refrigerator had a ding or like a scratch on it. I had two options, return the item or negotiate with LG for an allowance. I'm an accountant so I'm pretty sure you know what I did. I negotiated and I obtained a sizable allowance. Now let's think about this from LG's perspective. Do you think they want to have a refrigerator returned that is damaged? No, right? Neither do they want to pay someone to return a damaged product to their warehouse and then resend another one. So they're willing to negotiate or to issue an allowance. Let's assume that Sock Stereo returned goods costing $300 to PW Audio Supply on May 8th. Sock would record the following entry, debit accounts payable for $300 and credit inventory for the same amount. When you are dealing with a purchase return or allowance, go back to the original entry and simply reverse it. Because Sock Stereo increased inventory when the goods were received, inventory is decreased when Sock Stereo returns the goods. 
And the last thing I want to mention is let's suppose instead that Sox Stereo chose to keep the goods after being granted a $50 allowance, which is a reduction in price. This entry would result in a debit to accounts payable as well as a credit to inventory, but in this instance it would be for the allowance or $50. The credit terms of a purchase on account may permit the buyer to claim a cash discount for prompt payment. The buyer calls this cash discount a purchase discount. The incentive offers advantages to both parties. The purchaser saves money and the seller is able to shorten the operating cycle by converting the accounts receivable into cash. Credit terms specify the amount of the cash discount and the time period in which it is offered. They also indicate the time period in which the purchaser is expected to pay the full invoice price. In our previous illustration, credit terms are 210 net 30. This means that the buyer may take a 2% discount on the invoice price less any returns or allowances if payment is made within 10 days of the invoice date. That's the discount period. Otherwise, the net amount is due 30 days from the invoice date. Likewise, if the credit terms are 315 net 45, a 3% discount is available if payment is made within 15 days Otherwise, the net amount is due within 45 days. The term net means the amount due after subtracting any returns, allowances, and partial payments. When the buyer pays an invoice within the discount period, the amount of the discount decreases inventory. Remember, companies record inventory at cost and by paying within the discount period, the buyer has reduced its cost. To illustrate, let's assume Sock Stereo pays the balance due of $3,500, which represents the invoice price of $3,800 less the purchase return of $300 on May 14th, the last day of the discount period. Remember, the credit terms are 210 net 30. So the cash discount is $70. We simply take the net amount owed, or $3,500, and multiply that by 2%. The journal entry to record payment results in a debit to accounts payable for the amount owed, in this instance $3,500, a credit to inventory for $70, which represents the discount, and the credit to cash is for the net amount owed, or in this instance, $3,430. If Sox Stereo failed to take the discount and instead made full payment of $3,500 on June 3rd, they would debit accounts payable and credit cash for $3,500. The following T account provides a summary of the effect of the previous transactions on inventory. Sox Stereo originally purchased $3,800 worth of inventory. It returned $300 of inventory. It paid $150 in freight charges. And finally, it received a $70 discount off the balance owed because it paid within the discount period. This results in a balance of $3,580 in inventory.